you're traveling through another dimension. A dimension not only of sight and sound, but of mind. A journey into a wondrous land whose boundaries are those of imagination. Your next stop, the Twilight Zone. Attention, Grocery King shoppers. Today's special is Bubbling Brook Pure Spring Water, on sale in the beverage department. Why not pick up some for your family? Available in the gallon and half gallon sizes. That's Bubbling Brook Pure Spring Water, on sale now. Grace! Oh, hey, Martha. I thought that was you. Just doing a little last minute shopping. For Bill's party? But I told you, we'd take care of everything. Oh, you know me. I have just about everything I need, but I'm going to pick up some greens for the salad. Mm, maybe an appetizer. Well, don't worry about a cake. We're bringing one. Oh, shoot. So are the Hendersons. That's going to be a lot of calories tonight. Maybe we can freeze some of it. How many candles? Girl, if I tell you the truth, we might start a fire at the dinner table. <laughs> Please, Bill's not that old. I can't believe this is the big four. Oh, no. <laughs> he does wear well now, doesn't he? What's his secret? Good genes, I guess. Plus, he's a do-it-yourselfer. That keeps him healthy. <laughs> I wish some of that would rub off on Jerry. Oh, no, you don't. All that puttering around. Ha, gotcha. Not in the store, Oliver. Oh, sorry. No, that's all right. Put that away right now, young man. Yeah, but they're coming. Who's coming? The invaders. <laughs> I don't know what's gotten into him. Oh, he's just being a boy. I know a lot about that. You do? When my pa was his age, it was video games all the time. It still is. But they're so much more violent now. All about war and killing and... My husband says it's a natural instinct. What is? To protect and defend. Well, if he has to serve his country, that's one thing. But there's no war here now. Thank God. They do grow up fast. Too fast, if you ask me. I know. I mean, but really, what can we do? We can't keep them locked in their rooms. They're going to find out what the world's like sooner or later. I think it's a male rite of passage thing, like horror movies and wrestling. Mm-hmm. That's easy for you to say. You had girls. Hey, Mom. Hey, Mom, look. Captain Chris. No more breakfast cereal. There's vitamins and everything. It's nothing but sugar. Oh, Mom. Oliver, stay with me. Oliver! Ooh, she has her hands full. Mm-hmm, reminds me so much of my Paul. Too much sugar. Oh, Bill says that's a myth. Food coloring, then. I doubt it. It's the way the world is now. All the war news on television. I wish we could just turn it off for a while and let him grow up. Amen to that. Oh, shoot, what time is it? Mm, almost three. Oh, girl, I gotta get out of here. I gotta go get my hair done. I gotta stop at the cleaners. When do you want us at the house? Well, Bill won't be there before seven. You know, he has patience till six. He doesn't know, does he? He better not. It won't be much of a surprise if he does. Last chance for bubbling brook spring water at the sale price. Get some now in the beverage department. What child is that? You need bottled water? You know Bill's always restocking. He's just like a Boy Scout. Gotta be prepared. I can't believe you guys built a shelter. Well, you know, we'll probably never need it, knock on wood. But that's his pet project, protecting his family, and I love him for it. At least he doesn't rebuild cars in the backyard. Or collect model trains like Jerry. Pure spring water for all your family needs. You go ahead, I'll get the water. Really, you don't mind? No problem. Oh, I love you, Martha. I'll pay you back tonight, I promise. See you later. See you later. Welcome to Friday afternoon in suburbia. Time for last minute errands before the weekend begins. In this case, a surprise birthday party. Only there's a twist. What's in store for this particular evening is nothing less than a nightmare. Your attention is directed to the following fable. Once upon a time, families built bomb shelters in their basements in anticipation of a war they prayed would never come. The world lived on the brink of annihilation as men hoped for the best and prepared for the worst. Then the Cold War ended and shelters were forgotten until terrorism again made fear the order of the day. Please note that our story is not meant to be prophetic. It is the fervent prayer of all men of goodwill that such an attack will never come. It need not happen here. But in this place, in this time, the nightmare is about to become a reality. 
because this place is called the Twilight Zone. And now, The Shelter, starring Ernie Hudson with Stacy Keach as your narrator. There. Who wants champagne? Uh, maybe just a little. Give me your glasses, everybody. Mom, may I please be excused? Mm, I guess so. Just don't go too far. You know the dessert's coming, babe. Okay. Where are you going, son? The family room. My favorite program's on. Okay, but not too loud, Paul. I know. Who wants to make a toast? Now, Martha? If you don't, I will. All right, here goes. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? <laughs> no birthday celebration is complete without an after-dinner speech, and so let's get to the business at hand. The honoring of Dr. William Butler, <laughs> who tonight is one year older and uh, finally admits to being over 21. <laughs> Spare me. Easy, honey. Uh, I'll cut this short, Bill, in the interest of good taste. Ah. <laughs> and to save you excess embarrassment, uh, we got this uh, little surprise party together as a very small reminder to you that on this street in this town, you're a very, well, a very beloved guy. Yeah, sure. <laughs> His wife loves him. <laughs> there isn't one of us in this living room who hasn't put in a frantic phone call to you at some hour in the middle of the night. <laughs> You're not kidding. This kid's sick or that kid's got a fever or some crisis or other, and you'd come out with that antique medical bag of yours half asleep without even a moment's hesitation to, to ease a little pain and make a parent's heart beat normally again. <laughs> and there also isn't one of us in this room who... Hasn't owed you a whopping bill for a whole lot of months afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> Try years. Some of us still owe you. <laughs> Let's not forget about the chainsaw. Yeah, don't forget that. Another thing we owe him for. Oh, yes, yes. The good doctor's penchant for construction. His uh, genuine old-fashioned bomb shelter. I resent that. It's not old-fashioned. Yeah, well, with all due respect, Bill, it is circa 1950s. Uh, didn't I see one in an old issue of Life magazine, along with ads for hula hoops and the uh, new Edsel? <laughs> At any rate, I, I think we might as well go ahead and forgive him for such a quaint little hobby. Despite the fact that what he thinks of as farsightedness on his part is a real pain in the neck to the whole neighborhood. <laughs> ah, can't take a little noise. A little? Do I have to mention the cement trucks and the nocturnal hammering and sawing and all the rest of it? <laughs> I mean, don't get me started. Um, anyway, when Grace mentioned that it was your birthday, we took it upon ourselves to handle the proceedings, and if the truth be told, we didn't mind it one bit. Speak for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> so just as a uh, little personal aside, let me conclude this way. I've lived in this town for 30 years. As you'll recall, Bill, you and I went to the same school, joined the Army together. Uh, I became a broker, not a broken-down accountant. <laughs> you became a doctor. But we raised our kids on the same block, confided in each other about our personal problems, gave each other a few helping hands along the way, and... And I'm glad to say our wives became fast friends. Well, anyway, uh, in this goofy world we live in today, where the human race still seems unable to function without nuclear bombs and biological warfare, and when it uh, appears that this may be the legacy we're leaving our kids, well, it's a comforting thought that qualities like decency and kindness and friendship still hold sway. And these are the qualities that, that you have, Bill. In spades. Here, here. Yeah. 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 These are what you love for, you and Grace. So, uh, so before I uh, start honking into a handkerchief, let me let me wind it up this way. Happy birthday, Dr. William Butler, from the gang on the block, and may you have many, many more. Oh, yeah. oh, thank you so much, Jerry and Martha, Marty and Ellie, and of course Bob and Betty. We love you too. You are the best neighbors anyone could have. Bill, honey, don't you want to say something? You dirty dogs, you. First a surprise party, which I abhor, and then a sloppy sentimental speech. Boy, I thought it would go on forever. You want me to continue? <laughs> no, no. You'll spoil everybody's digestion. All I can say is, bless you all. 
there's no gift that means as much as good friends. But I might add about civil defense. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Here we go. I may not be as crazy as you think. Do I have to mention the three little pigs? One built his house of straw, the next one of twigs, but the third one, the third little pig. Ran squealing all the way home. <laughs> <laughs> Did he? he just call us fine? All right, but you get my point. Believe me, I sincerely hope I'm wrong. I'm not much of a gambler, as you know. In this case, I'm betting that I'm right, but I'm hoping that you win. That's some bet, all right. <laughs> now, everybody relax. That's it for the speeches. Who wants some more champagne? Maybe just a wee bit. Hold on, everybody. There's one more surprise. Betty, I need you and Grace in the kitchen. You didn't get a cake. Hush now. I'm sure that that son of yours will want some. Girl, watch out or he'll eat the whole thing. Come with me. Polly? Yeah, Pop? Help your mother clear the plates. Okay, but... But what? What is it? The television. It just went out. Gods. A crisis. <laughs> Marty, you're an engineer. What do you know about TVs that go on the fritz? That there are times when such malfunctions are a boon to peace. <laughs> what happened, Paul? A picture just went out? Yeah. Are uh, you still getting sound? No, first the picture went off. Then there was some kind of announcement uh, about an emergency. Here it comes, everybody. We couldn't get all the candles to stay lit. Hold it for a second. What did you say, Paul? The announcer said to turn on the emergency station or something on the radio. The uh, emergency broadcast network? You must have heard it wrong, Paul. I didn't hear it wrong, Pop. That, that's what he said. Tune to the emergency frequency. Then everything went blank. He's right. It's a blank screen. There's a radio in the living room. Hey, what about the cake? Not now, Grace. <laughs> Direct from Washington, D.C. To repeat, four minutes ago, the President of the United States made the following announcement. I quote, At 8.04 Eastern Standard Time, our radar stations in Alaska reported a large number of unidentified flying objects moving southeast across our borders at a high rate of speed. <gasps> what is this, some kind of joke? I don't think so. Quiet. As of this moment, we have been unable to determine the origin of these objects. But in the interest of national security, I am declaring a temporary emergency. Until further notice, we are in a condition of yellow alert. So said the president. Federal authorities request that all civilian defense personnel report to their assigned posts immediately. A temporary state of emergency is now in effect. No commercial traffic of any kind will be permitted on streets or highways in the northeast sector of the country. Repeat, no commercial vehicles of any kind will be permitted on streets or highways. You are asked to remain calm and proceed in an orderly fashion to your local shelter centers. Repeat, go to your nearest designated shelters. What about Jeannie? She'll be at the university. It's in the middle of the semester. Bob, we've got to call her. My sister, she's upstate. Did he say they're attacking upstate New York? Does the phone still work? I don't know. The line's down. The circuits are overloaded. Everyone's trying to call. The children... Yeah, call the babysitter. Did you hear what he said? We can't get through. Stay calm, please. The power's still on. Check the next block. Is your telephone working? No. I'm loading up the car. We gotta get out. Stay where you are. The roads will be blocked. Where can we go, Bill? Tell me. There isn't anywhere to go. We've got to stay put for now. Are you coming, Jerry? Yes, I'm coming. Then what, Bill? What? You heard the radio. If it's bombers, they're probably headed for the industrial centers. They'll be trying to shoot them down now. But if it's high-speed missiles, some may get through. There's no telling how long we have. Marty, I need you. Get the kids, Ellie. The supplies in the camper. Hurry, they're coming. They're coming. Bill, we've got to do something. Where's Paul? I'm right here, Pop. Get inside, both of you. We've gone over this before. Yeah, but I never thought it would actually... Well, it has. Don't just stand there. You know what to do. Inside. Now. 
the distant early warning line in Greenland, state of emergency. Repeat, emergency. This is not a test. This is not a test. This is not a test. This is the emergency broadcast network. Repeating, all citizens not engaged in civil defense work are to remain off the streets. Please stay tuned to this frequency for further announcements. Repeat, please stay tuned to this frequency for further announcements. I got the canned goods, Pop. Good. Carry them down to the basement. The shelter? Of course the shelter. Hurry. I'm filling the water bottles, Bill. Do the best you can. Fill all the empties. I'm going to check the generator in case the power goes off. There's hardly any water coming through the tap now. It's the pressure. Everybody and his brother's doing the same thing we are. Keep it on full force until it stops completely. I I'm trying. Easy, honey. Make believe it costs a hundred bucks an ounce. In an hour, it'll be worth more than that. Okay, what else, Pop? All the canned goods down? Everything I could find. How about the jars in the fruit cellar? I got those, too. Get my bag from the bedroom. What about books and stuff? Your father told you to get his bag. I'm going. There's still time, Grace. Paul's right. We will need books and other things besides food and water. God knows how long we'll have to stay down there. Light bulbs. Where do we keep the light bulbs? Top shelf. Which cupboard? That one, there. Oh, but we don't have any. I ran out yesterday. I was going to buy some at the store. There was a sale on them, but I guess so. Grace? <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm, I'm talking like an idiot now. Go ahead. Mouth all the idiocies you want. You can also dance a jig or go up and take a cold shower. Just as long as you don't panic, Grace. That's the important thing now. Not to panic. How much time do we have? Seems to me I remember reading somewhere that from the first alarm we might have, I think it was 15 minutes to a half hour. 15 minutes? I'm winging it, Grace. I don't know for sure. I don't think anyone does. The best we can do is to continue doing what we're doing. Keep pouring the water. I'll see to the boy. All right. Paul? Yeah? You got my bag? And some other stuff. Books and magazines, too. Let me give you a hand. Here. I'll be right back. Wait. Where are you going? Outside. But just for a minute. Are you out of your mind? Get down to the shelter as fast as you can. But my bike's out there. You won't need it. I said go down to the basement. W why? What? Why should we even bother? If they drop a bomb or something, it will burn everything up. I saw it on TV. If it's an atom bomb, there won't be anything left. Nothing. It'll just be... Don't even think that. Don't let yourself think it. But it's true, isn't it? We don't know. Nobody knows. We may be out of the danger zone. We might be two or three hundred miles from where it hits. Out here, we may not even know when it happens. Dad, we're 40 miles from New York. We'll get it, too. If we do, we do, that's all. But for the time being, our job is to stay alive. And you're not going to do that by running around in the night trying to find a bicycle. Now give me some help here. And don't say anything like that in front of your mother. She's frightened enough as it is. Yes, sir. Bill, there's no more water. I think we've got enough. I filled every container we could find. Bring a full one with you. Paul and I'll get the rest in a minute. We're going down now? That's right. Down to the shelter. There. The lights work. Go inside. Bill, I, I don't think I'm ready. I'm afraid we don't have much choice. Wait, there's a five-gallon can of gasoline in the garage. Paul, you run up and get it. We may need it for the generator. Okay. Oh, Bill, I'm, I'm so tired. Here, sit on the cot. Hmm, I just want to lay down. I want to go to sleep. Grace, listen to me. I am listening. I just explained to Paul, if there's a bomb, if... There's no assurance it'll land near us. And if it doesn't... But if it does, if it hits New York, we'll get it too. All of it. The poison, the radiation, the whole thing, the firestorm. Nothing will be able to put it out and... And we'll be in a shelter. 
With any luck at all, we'll survive. I built this room very, very carefully to government standards. We've got food and water to last a long time if we use it wisely. And then what? Then what, Bill? We crawl out of here and tiptoe through all the rubble up above, the rubble and the ruins and the bodies of our friends? Why is it so necessary to survive anyway? What's the point? Bill, Bill, admit it. Wouldn't it be better? Wouldn't it be quicker and easier if we just... I got the gas can. Is that all you need from up here? Do you hear that? Whose voice is that, Grace? That's why we have to survive. He's 12 years old. It's too early, much too early to think about a boy dying when he's done so little living. For him, Grace. Paul? Yeah. Set it there, next to the generator. I'll go up and get the rest of the water. Jerry, what in the... What are you doing, Bill? Storing water, which is what you should be doing. Well, we got about 30 gallons, and then the water stopped. Did yours stop, too? That's right. You'd better get on home, Jerry, and into your ship. Into your basement. I'd board up the windows if I were you, and if you got any wood putty, I'd seal the corners to make them airtight. We don't have a cellar, Bill. The benefits of modern architecture. And wouldn't you know it, we got the one new house on the street. All the latest conveniences, everything at your beck and call. Every wonder of modern science except for the one they didn't take into account. The one that's headed straight for us right now. Jerry, I don't know what to tell you. Can I bring Martha and the kids over? Can I at least do that? Here? They're sitting ducks in our house. Sitting ducks. We don't, we don't have any protection at all. You can use our basement. Your basement? W what about your shelter? That, that's the only place anyone can survive. We've, we've got to get into the shelter. I don't have any room, Jerry. I don't have near enough room or supplies. It's designed for three people. We'll bring our own water and food. We'll sleep standing up if necessary. Please, Bill, we've got to use your shelter. I, I, I have to keep my family alive. You understand that? We, we won't use any of your stuff. You have my word. What about air? It's a 10 by 10 room with an air filter to supply three people. Will you bring your own air? 24 hours, Bill, and, and then we'll get out, I swear, just, just so we can have a chance. No, no. When that door gets closed and locked, it stays closed and locked. I'm not breaking the seal. There'll be radiation and heaven knows what else. I'm sorry, Jerry. As God is my witness, I'm sorry, but I built it for my family. And what about my family? Don't they matter? Of course they do. I'll have to ask you to get out of my way. What do we do? Just rock on the front porch until we get burned to cinders? That's not my concern. At this given moment, it's my family I have to worry about. I am not going to sit by and watch my wife and children die in agony. I am not going to do that. Do you understand me? I am not going to get... Let go of me. Oh. 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 Um. I'm sorry, Bill. I, I, I didn't mean to knock you down. Oh. Please, please believe me. I kept telling you, all of you, build a shelter, get ready, forget the card parties and barbecues for maybe two hours a week, and make an admission to yourself that the worst is possible. But you didn't want to listen. None of you wanted to listen. To build a shelter was to acknowledge the kind of age we live in, and none of you wanted to face that. So now, Jerry, you got to face something far worse. Reality. May God protect you. It's out of my hands. It's simply out of my hands. Where is he? Marty? Where? I've got to talk to him. We all do. There's no more time. I tell you, there's no more time. Bill, I, I have to talk to you. I want to go home. 
Just a minute, honey. They're already down in the shelter. I told you they'd be there. They locked themselves in. Your wife's right, Marty. It's no use. He slammed the door in my face. He's got to let us in. We have windows in half our basement. I don't have anything to board them up with. At least you have a basement. Let's go, Marty. The baby's getting a chill. We'll have to do something. Go where? There's no place that's safe. Where's the shelter? Downstairs? No, I told you, he won't listen. Bill, it's Marty. We've got the kids with us. Bill, can you hear me? Bill, please. Mommy, the lights. It's going to be all right. Marty, Marty, where are you? The lights are out. Bill, I know you can hear me. Please, please let us in. Please, Bill, just let us in. No one else. Oh, my God. What's happening, Bill? I'll start the generator. How can you in the dark? I know how to work it. Over here. Dad, I found the switch. All you have to do is pull the cord. There's a ceiling light. At least we can see. Bill, we don't have any lights out here. Uh, my wife and son are scared to death and my baby's crying. Just open the door. Marty, I would if I could. Do you understand? If it didn't mean endangering the lives of my own flesh and blood, I would. I swear to you, I would. Please, you've got to. Don't keep asking me, Marty, because I can't. I can't and I won't. I feel sorry for you then. I really do. You probably will survive, but you're gonna have blood on your hands. You hear me, Bill? You'll have blood on your hands. Dad, maybe we- No, I've already made my decision. But Bill- I can't help it, Grace. Either it's us or it's them. All my life, I tell you all my life, I've only had one function. That was to end suffering to relieve pain, to cure and do no harm. But the rules are different now, don't you see? Now there's only one purpose, and that's to survive. Nothing else means anything. We can't afford to let it mean anything. Marty, get out! Do you hear me? Just get out! I brought a flashlight. Who's got a portable radio? Here. Announce that there are no further reports on the unidentified flying objects. A statement from the Pentagon confirms that an enemy attack cannot be ruled out at this time. Remain tuned to this station for updates. What does that mean? It means they're missiles. I'm not going to sit here. It'll hit any minute. I just know it. It's going to hit any minute. What are we going to do, Bob? Tell me. I'll tell you what we shouldn't do. We shouldn't just moon around here like sheep. Maybe we ought to pick out a basement, go to work on it, pool all our stuff, food, water, everything. It isn't fair. He's down there completely safe, and our kids have to wait around for a bomb to drop. Why don't we just go down in his basement and break open the door? We couldn't all fit in there. It would be crazy to try. Then draw lots. Pick out one family. What difference would it make? He won't let us in. We can all march down there and tell him he's got the whole street against him. And what good would that do? I keep telling you, even if we were to break down the door, there's not enough room and there's not enough supplies. We'd just be killing everybody for no good reason. If it saves even one of these kids out here, I call that a reason. Jerry, you know him better than any of us. You're his best friend. Why don't you go down again? Try to talk to him. Plead with him. Uh, tell him to pick out at least one family. Meaning yours, Weiss? Why not? I've got a three-month-old infant. So what? Is your baby's life any more precious than our kids? I never said that. Look, if you're gonna argue about who deserved to live more than the next person, you can shut your mouth. Why don't you shut your mouth, Weiss? I don't even know why we let you in the neighborhood. It always happens. You let one lousy foreign-born type in, and everything goes to hell. Pushy, grabby, semi-Americans. Hey, pal, you're garbage. You're right. It always comes to that. 
There's always one person, one rotten, unthinking fool like you, who suddenly becomes the big straw boss and decides who's acceptable. I mean it, Weiss. If we've got to start hunting around for people to disqualify, you and yours are at the top of the list. Why, well, you stupid son of a... Keep it up, both of you. We won't need a bomb. We can slaughter each other with our bare hands. Marty, go down to Bill's shelter again. Ask him. What's that? The two-minute warning? That means they're almost here. Look at the sky. What are those lights? Searchlights. It's got to be close. Anything new on the radio? No. I'm going down there. And I'm going to get him to open that door. I don't care what the rest of you think. That's the only thing left. He's right. Come on, let's do it. Yeah. 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 Where's the stairway? Over here. You got a bunch of your neighbors out here who want to stay alive. Now, you can open the door and talk to us, or you can keep on doing what you're doing. And we're gonna bust our way in. Bill, Bill, they mean business out here. And I mean business in here. I've already told you, Jerry, you're wasting your time. You're wasting precious time that could be used for something else, like planning how to survive. Get some kind of battery ram. Over on Bennett Avenue, Phil Klein has some heavy pipe in his yard. I've seen it. Nah, that would get Klein into the act. Who cares about saving him? The minute we do that, we let all those people know that there's a shelter on this street. Then we'll have a whole lot of outsiders to contend with. Sure. And what right have they got to come here? This isn't their street. This isn't their shelter. So this is our shelter now, is it? And on the next street, that's what, a different country? Damn fools. You, you've all gone insane, every one of you. Maybe you don't want to live, Jerry. Maybe you don't care. Oh, I care. Believe me, I care. I'd like to see the morning sun, too, but you're turning into a mob, and a mob doesn't have any brains, which is exactly what you're proving. Well, I say let's get the battering ram, and we'll just tell Klein to keep his mouth shut. And if he doesn't keep his mouth shut, what? Will you shut it for him? I agree with Jerry. Let's get hold of ourselves. Stop and think for a minute. Hey. Nobody cares what you think, you or your kind. I thought I made that clear. I think the first order of business is to get you out of here. Why did you have to hit him? Marty, are you all right? He's easy, Marty. I'll help you. You had your chance, Bill. Just remember that. You had your chance. Now, come on. Come on, let's get something to smash this door down. Yeah. Bill, who were those people? Those people? Those are our neighbors, Grace. Our friends. The people we've lived next door to for 20 years. Come on, Paul. What do you want me to do, Pop? Help me brace the door. Stack everything we have against it. Maybe it'll hold for a while. All citizens are reminded to stay off the streets. Authorized vehicles must have the right of way. Please remain calm and stay off the streets. You heard what he said. Let's get inside. This way. Try the battering ram. Yeah, let's see what it can do. Yeah, knock it down. Who told you, Butler? You should have opened up. Yeah, you should have listened to us. Put your back into it, Paul. The hinges are breaking. Go aside, Butler. We're coming in. Remain tuned for an important 
message. The President of the United States has just announced that the unidentified objects are radar anomalies caused by the breakup of a satellite re-entering the Earth's atmosphere. There is no cause for alarm. There are no enemy missiles approaching. There is no danger. We are not under attack. The state of emergency has been officially lifted. Repeat, there is no enemy attack. Stand by for further information. <laughs> oh, thank God. Thank God. Yes. Oh. Uh, hey, Marty, uh, uh, Marty, uh, I guess I went off my rocker, huh? You, you understand, don't you? I, I, I just kind of went off my rocker. I, I didn't mean all those things I said. No? No, come on, you know that. Uh, all of us, all of us were just so scared, so confused. It's no wonder, right? I, I mean, you can understand why we blew our tops a little, can't you? It, it's, it's normal. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Hey, uh, I don't think Marty's going to hold it against you. Just as I uh, hope... Bill won't hold this against us. We'll, we'll pay for the damage. We'll take up a collection right away. Why don't we have uh, uh, s some kind of a block party or something? Tomorrow night, uh, uh, a big celebration, just like old times. So we can all get back to normal? How about it, Bill? Hey, Bill, I, I, I told you we'd pay for the damages. Yeah, I'll, I'll put it in writing if you want. That's all it takes. Marty, you want a block party and you want things back to normal. And Bob, you just want to forget all about it. And Jerry, you pay for the damages, huh? You'll even put it in writing. You pay for the damages. The damages. I wonder if any one of us has any idea of what those damages really are. Maybe part of it is finding out what we're really like when we're normal. The kind of people we are, just under the skin. I mean, all of us. A lot of naked, wild animals who put such a price on staying alive that we claw our neighbors to death just for the privilege. We were spared a bomb, but I wonder. I wonder if we weren't destroyed, just the same, without a shot being fired. Come on, Grace. Paul, you can come out now. We're safe. No moral, no message, no prophetic tract. Just a simple statement of fact. For civilization to survive, the human race has to remain civilized. One very small exercise in logic from the Twilight Zone. Hi, this is Carl Amari, producer of the Twilight Zone radio dramas. I'd like to take a moment to tell you about our official website at twilightzoneradio.com where you'll get the latest news and information on these Twilight Zone radio dramas. Plus, at twilightzoneradio.com, you can digitally download three free episodes or any of our episodes for only $1.95 each. In this age of ever-changing technology, we've decided to make these episodes instantly available to you by making the Twilight Zone radio dramas a digital download-only series. This means that this series will no longer be offered on CD. The CD collections at our website are now being offered while supplies last at buy one, get one free. So be sure to get your favorites before they're sold out. Be sure to visit us often, and I'll see you in the zone. The Shelter, starring Ernie Hudson with Stacey Keach as your narrator, was adapted for radio by Dennis Etchison and written for The Twilight Zone by Rod Serling. Heard in the cast were April Williams, Damon Williams, Tom McElroy, Renee Domenz, Jamie Barron, Anna Sferza, Joby Cerny, Linda Ryder, C.J. Amari, Norm Woodell, Kurt Nabig, Doug James, Rick Vargas, and Jeff Lupatin. 
This copyrighted radio series is produced and directed by Carl Amari for Falcon Picture Group and Westwood One. Sound design and custom Foley effects for The Twilight Zone by Cerny American creatives Bob Benson, Greg Lee, Matt Sorrow, Tim Cerny, and Todd Byer. To learn more about The Twilight Zone radio dramas and to contact us, visit our official website at twilightzoneradio.com. Doug James speaking. <laughs>